What's going on, hobby family? My name is Vito, and you're watching Trident and True Hobbies. Today, we're gonna go on a journey together. We're gonna unpack the new Age of Sigmar 3rd edition box set, Dominion, and learn how to paint all the contents inside. Starting with Yndrasta, the Celestial Spear. I thought we'd start with a bang, as Yndrasta is one of Sigmar's favorite champions, charged with leading the God King's forces across Gur and serving as his ultimate beast slayer. To begin our journey, I pre-assembled the miniature, but left the wings off as we're going to be painting that separately. To prep the miniature for painting, we'll be using a texture paste for the base. Using an old brush, I make sure to blend any seams that are created from the miniature and the base itself. Once it's dry, we're going to prime the miniature in black and give only the base a zenithal highlight of white. The only time that we're going to be using an airbrush is for the wings. Now I'm a really big fan of how the cover art of the rulebook depicts Yandrasta's wings, so this is going to act as our inspiration. We're going to be using Sotek Green and target the upper portions of the wings. I'm aiming the airbrush about 45 degrees or so to the model so that I can get some of the black primer to show in the shadows and some overspray onto the middle part of the wings. Next, we're gonna use Screamer Pink and create a transition from the mid part of the wings to the blue areas. Coming in with Pink Horror, we're gonna target the tips of the wings and repeat the previous transition. To create more of a transition between our colors, we're going to use Sky Blue from Monument Hobbies and spray the wings from above. Now to create that glowing electricity look, I add a simple dry brush of white, then hit the very tips of the same white through an airbrush. With our wings complete, we can now start on brushwork. To begin our armor, I'm going to create a base coat of rich gold and silver and mix them roughly 50-50. Next, we're going to use Wildwood Contrast mixed with five parts contrast medium and apply this all over the armor. Using the same mix, I'm going to create the target areas of the miniature that would be shrouded in shadow. Moving into our highlights, let's use a light bronze, thin down two to one with water and target all the raised areas of the mini. the highlights, we're going to come back with pure silver and add little dots and scratches and target the highest points. To add more warmth to our armor, we're going to create a glaze using Evil Sun Scarlet and add our glaze to the deepest shadows. This will homogenize our transitions between light and dark gold. Moving on, we're going to target all other metallic parts with lead belcher. While we wait for the paint to dry, we're going to use the same screamer pink that we used for the wings and target the shaft of her spear and hilt of the sword. To shade our items, we'll cover it all in Melnoy. Now if you're like me, I like to jump all over the place when it comes to painting a miniature. So with a thinned layer of Gilman flesh contrast, we'll start to target her face and head. For her hair, I used yellow ochre as a base coat and even glazed the same color on the side of her head to make it look like a shaved area. Oh, yeah. oh. To 
create our highlights, I use ivory mixed with our base coat and progressively get lighter and lighter. For the shadows, I mix some Scream of Pink into our hair highlight colors and add this into our hair. This color not only acts as shadow, but also a reflection from our reddish gold armor. Now because Screamer Pink is the mother color, I use the same mix to highlight the weapons. Adding a bit more ivory back into the mix, we create a highlight for her face. And thinning Screamer Pink into a glaze, we create a nice warm shadow for her jaw and cheek structure. We can now move on to the blades of her weapons. And we're going to try to aim for a true metallic metal effect. If you like a detailed description of how I paint this effect, check out the video in the upper right hand corner. We can now move on to our tabard. We're going to start by mixing black and burnt red for our base coat. Next, we're going to use pure burnt red and cover up 90% of our base coat color, but leave the deepest recesses untouched. For our second highlight, let's mix burnt red with bold pyrrole red and apply a transition from the previous color. Coming back with pure, bold pyrrole red, we'll create a glaze and apply it to our transitions. The last thing to do is add some texture. We begin with grabbing an orange and create small lines or scratches into the cloth. To finish painting the details of our miniature, we're going to come in with mahogany and base coat the parchment seal along with the tree. Now as we wait for the tree to dry, we can finish the parchment. Adding smaller and smaller amounts of ivory to the mahogany allows us to create our transitions and a worn parchment look. Moving back to our tree trunk, we're going to give it a light dry brush of ivory. We only really want to target the raised areas and not the entire piece. Once it's complete, we'll create a glaze of yellow ochre mixed with mahogany and apply it randomly on the bark of the tree. Once that's dry, We'll apply the same process using pure yellow ochre this time. And to finish off the tree, I'll give the entire area a wash with both Agrax Earthshade and Skeleton Horde Contrast. Now we can move on to what I think is the most fun part of this entire process, and that's painting the base. We're going to start by grabbing some earthy tones and add five parts water to each paint. In doing so, we are creating our own washes, which the Pro Acryl line of paints works wonders. Now the trick to the step is to apply these pigmented washes while they are all wet. So, starting with the stones, we'll cover all the step areas with olive flesh, followed by light umber on the ground and in the cracks of the steps. Now don't worry about the paint mixing, as this is something that we want to happen. With our black wash, we're going to target some of the more deeper shadow areas and allow the watered down paint to mix with our previous step. Adding in the dark green camo allows us to target the moss and vines, but also allows us to simulate vegetation on the base. Once dry, I added some light weathering powder to the base floor and the cracks of the steps to simulate dirt buildup. And that's it! With a few simple techniques such as layering and washes, we created an awesome looking mini that's ready to purge the beasts of chaos.
You know what's better than purging the beasts of chaos? B-roll. If you liked what you've seen and want to keep up to date on all the painting process that I have planned for the Dominion box set, do consider subscribing, liking this video, and leaving an awesome comment. It actually does help with the YouTube algorithm in getting more eyeballs to watch the type of content that you want. And if you like the show, help the channel grow. You can support Trident and True Hobbies through Patreon, where there are a ton of fun rewards that you can take advantage of. One of them being a giveaway of the entire painted box set of Dominion. Speaking of Patreon, a special thanks to all of my new patrons. LT Red. I don't know why I said it like that, it just sounds fun. Michael Grove and Aram. Thanks to each and every one of you for your new and continued support. You guys are awesome. And as always, Hobby Family, peace on the streets and make sure to...